Good morning. Anybody know God is good this morning? We made it to the second Sunday of 2018. God is so good. Lord, you are good and your mercies endure forever. Why don't you help us out this morning? Place. 
in all generations. <coughs> Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, Return ye children of men, for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with the flood, they are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourishes and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withered. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, but it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days which wherein Thou has afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and the glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord, our God, be upon us, and establish thy work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. I've read Psalm number 90, so the deacon come forth. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Let head bow. The most holy, eternal God, our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father God, we come just to say thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Holy Spirit, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon us. Every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess. Heavenly Father, we come unto you confessing our sins, asking you for forgiveness. Sins of omission, sins of commission. Heavenly Father, we ask you to shower down the blessing upon your church. Heavenly Father, we ask you just to shower down the blessing of first community to Antioch. Give us a love that runs from heart to heart. Bind us together that one can't fall for the other. Teach us to be obedient to your word. Heavenly Father, I know you say a family that prays together stays together. Heavenly Father, I know you say if my people, which are called by my name, if they humble themselves and pray and seek thy face, and turn from their wicked ways, then when I hear from heaven, and will forgive them for their sins, and heal their land. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we had 10,000 tongues. We couldn't thank you enough. Thank you, Lord. Shower down a blessing on this community. Shower down a blessing, Heavenly Father, on this whole state. Shower down a blessing upon this country. Heavenly Father, we know we live in this spiritual warfare. We're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities, walls and rumors of walls. 
Heavenly Father, not my will, but let your will be done. Thank you, Father, for your grace, and thank you for your mercy. We just want to trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lead not to thy own understanding, but in all thy way. Acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Heavenly Father, we ask you to shower down a blessing upon the under shepherd of this flock. Thank you for our pastor. Give him the wisdom to preach, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Heavenly Father, I know you say, how could we hear without a preacher? How could he preach except he was sent by God? I will give you pastor that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Thank you for Pastor Gaines. Thank you for his wife. Thank you for his family. Heavenly Father, not my will, but let your will be done. Father, we ask you to shower down a blessing upon the one that mourn, for they shall be comfortable. Not my will, but let your will be done. Heavenly Father, I know you said weeping may endure for a night, for joy coming in the morning. Yes, God. Not my will, but let your will be done. Heavenly Father, when we can't talk to you no more, we can't pray to you no more, let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. All these blessings we ask in Jesus' name, amen, and thank God. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. When I lost my direction, you were the compass for my way. You're the fire and light. When nights are long and cold In sadness You are the laughter That shatters all my fears When I'm all alone Your hand is there to hold you help me say, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. Oh, you're the heart of my contentment, of my contentment. For all I do, oh Jesus, you're the center of, center of my joy. Lift your voices and help us say, Jesus, you're, you're the center of, center of my, my joy. Your voices just call his name Jesus. You are the center of my joy. Oh Jesus, you are. I thank you for being the center of my joy. Oh Jesus, you
like him, y'all. He is Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. There's none like him. Oh, Jesus, you the Good morning. Would all of our visitors stand and please remain standing. The First Community Antioch Baptist Church family would like to extend a heartfelt welcome to each of you. We're excited to have you in our service this morning, but not because of what we're doing, but because of what God continues to do here at First Community Antioch Baptist Church. You see, he continues to fill our pastor with the love for God and a love for God's people. He continues to provide every one of our needs. He continues to open doors that no man can close. And when we fall way, way down, our God continues to lift us up. You see, he's just never failed us yet. And we welcome each one of you, our visitors, to come along with us as we glorify and magnify the mighty name of God. If you are a first-time visitor, would you continue to stand and accept a welcome packet from a member of our hospitality ministry? Thank 
you. Please come again, and God bless each of you. God bless you real good, and Lord keep you so grateful for all of you who have come to share in this worship <coughs> experience. The Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. <coughs> One other <coughs> excuse me, announcement that uh, I prepared to give Brother Bailey, and that's uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. ecumenical commemorative service on tomorrow at the King David Baptist Church topic is faith and education initiate strength courage and uh, wisdom and uh, we know that I will be the guest speaker for this occasion a choir is to be there and we ask him if uh, all of you some of you most of you many of you if you can to be there to support this particular event amen the Lord bless you real good, and Lord keep you. Uh, we were blessed this morning, Sister Linda Brock, but uh, inspiration, inspirational message, so timely, so challenging, so enlightening. God bless you, my darling. Amen. So grateful for you and how God is using you in that area. Also, uh, we know next week, next Sunday, uh, Dr. Timothy Middleton, uh, who presides over uh, missionary activities of Southern Baptist uh, Association for Louisiana, is going to be here with us, and he shall speak to our hearts, and uh, we do want to hear what that to say, and uh, we want to welcome him as uh, spiritual. Uh, intelligent, uh, good black folks. Okay. Amen. So we, we don't want to make a difference. That's what we want. We want to make sure that uh, we understand that uh, we, we're not what some of them folks saying we are out there. We, we're intelligent people. We're good people. Amen. And we come from good countries and good continents. Amen. And you got to be proud of yourself. If you're not proud of yourself, how can you expect other people to be proud of you? You got to be proud of yourself. Uh, and, uh, so we, we are just as great and as much as anybody else. Uh, you have to accept that in your heart and know that to be true. And uh, why? Because your value uh, has been established not by your color and not by, by any particular uh, culture. Your value has been established by the fact that God has made you in his own image. And, and God doesn't make junk. God made good. He looked upon it and behold, he saw everything that he had made. And it was very good. That we were included in that assessment. Amen? So don't go around getting angry with people because they have certain ideas and certain feelings. Uh, you're not to... Uh, respond to what man say about you, you'll respond to what God has said about you. 
you are his children, so we are so grateful for that. Also, we want to uh, remember the sick and the shut in in our prayers. We are so grateful uh, that God has uh, bestowed his grace upon our brother, Brother Renee Young. Thank you, Pastor. We are so happy to be present in our midst. Thank God for Brother and Sister John. Amen. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Uh, also, uh, we, the card that was raised by Brother uh, Bailey concerning Brother Hall, uh, gratitude in his family, and the family of the late Sister Joy Stewart, and uh, he did give a donation uh, to the church, and we're so grateful for their generosity. Uh, the other thing is, uh, uh, we had a meeting sometime in November, it was concerning the direction in which we're going and the emphasis we're, uh, we're, we're placing on doing our best to be the best for the Lord and give God the best of ourselves, the best of our service. And uh, I address uh, the, those, those issues. I did ask that uh, each ministry uh, have a meeting, call a special meeting, and I want to be present in it. As it is now, we haven't accomplished that. So I'm saying now, between now and uh, next month, I want every ministry, every ministry, to set a meeting. Inform me of the meeting, and I will be there in the meeting with you. Okay? Okay, every ministry, every ministry, we're going to have that done uh, between now and uh, the end of February. Uh, so we're grateful for, for that and uh, we ask at this time that we will stand and uh, recite our theme for this year. Our theme for this year as it was last year is our Old Testament supported scripture is it says, also, uh, New Testament supported scripture is, it says, also James 4 and 7 says, This is the day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. So glad until at this time. We want to warm their greet somebody. Please go forward. Go forward, and we do want to go forward. We want to go forward in our service to our fellow man and go forward in our commitment and our dedication to Almighty God. Yeah. And we want to go forward in, the, in take an introspection of ourselves. I read about three days ago, and I've been Googling and Googling and Googling. I can't pull that article up. I didn't write the name of the journalist who wrote it. But uh, it has to do with this. He said he was uh, out on a, on a beach somewhat, somewhat in the... Uh, in the uh, water area, and he noted that that was a lady who constantly was looking at her cell phone, and she was tapping the glass, she was doing this and she was doing that. But then there was earlier so in the morning, she was doing this and doing that. And he said that it kind of annoyed him because of the fact that he said, here's the beauty of nature and uh, God's wonderful creation, and she should be watching this and should be looking at this, and, say, and, and she just fumbling around with her telephone, fumbling around with her telephone. And so then I, as I read it, I was beginning to say, you know, I wonder why, you know, he was paying so much attention to her, you know. And then further down in the article, he said, he said, but then he said, God spoke to me. He said, when God spoke to me, God said to me, he said, you are being distracted just as much as she is. Because you're not looking at the beauty of nature, you're looking at her. 
he says, and, mm, he said, then uh, it was as if God was saying to me, he said, a lot of time we spend, we spend much time looking at other people, Amen. judging other people, Amen. pointing out their inconsistency or their limitation or their shortcomings or their failure. He said, we constantly do that, he said, and overlook. He said, we need to spend more time looking at ourselves. Let's spend, we see, by talking about our brother and our sister in a negative way, we will not make them better. But if we work on us, we can make ourselves better. Our criticism does not better the, uh, the activity, or better the character of other people. But if we critique ourselves and we are honest with ourselves, then I tell you, we can be what? We can be better. See, you are not called upon to be better than your brother. You are called upon to be better than yourself. I'm called upon to be better than me. Am I helping somebody? So let's spend time and put forth effort, go forward in evaluating ourselves and considering whether or not we are in the will of God and our behavior, our attitude reflect the character of Christ and if we do that, I think that we emerge from that evaluation stronger, better, and more open and tolerant of other people. Am I helping somebody? Upon the strength of uh, that expression, you might want to come to the altar this morning and uh, keep that in mind. There are other things perhaps you want to pray for, you want to emphasize, but at least keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. There is a need for self-objectivity. There is a need. There is a need. It may not be that my brother needs to change. Maybe I need to adjust my attitude. So you want to do that. It won't hurt. It won't hurt. It won't hurt. Especially if it moves some barrier out of your life that will enable God to bless you the way he want to bless you and do for you what he really want to do for you. It's not my mother, not my father, not my sister, my brother, not my friend, but it's me, oh Lord. I stand in the need of prayer. I stand in the need of being affected by your grace in a special way. We want to continue to be in prayer for the field family. And that God would continue to bestow his grace. It hurts when we lose, not lose, but it hurts when we are separated, even though it's temporary. But it hurts when we are separated from those we love so dearly and those who have contributed so much to our lives. But he understands, and his grace is still sufficient. He still cares, and he want to be involved in our lives. So as you pray this morning, you want to pray for yourself, you want to pray for your spouse, you want to pray for your relative, your fellow man, you want to pray for your pastor, your pastor want to pray for you, and we just want to lift each other up in prayer, and no home in prayer. Father, we are so grateful that you are so good to us. You love us with an everlasting love. Underneath us are your everlasting arms. You care about us, you have demonstrated your love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You showed us, Heavenly Father, not only said from a distance, I love you, but you came down to share with us in the human predicament. And you demonstrated your love, you demonstrated your willingness to be a part of our affairs. You demonstrated, Heavenly Father, that you were concerned about our bodies. You give us food to eat. And you, you, you have demonstrated, Heavenly Father, your concern about our hurts and our pains and our sorrow. For you said, come unto me, all that labor heavy laden, I will give you rest. So we thank you, Father. And we come before you, your presence. We come to you to receive rest for our restlessness. We come to receive strength for our weakness. We come to receive companionship for our loneliness. We come to receive wholesome, encouraging, positive words for the negative word that has so often been expressed by us. So just thank you. Look upon these, your people, Father. You know every need that is represented here. You know every circumstance. You know every condition. 
You know the one, Heavenly Father, who need a job, the one who needs promotion on their job. You know the one who needs increase in their finances. You know the one who needs that bill paid, Heavenly Father. You know the one who needs that body here. You understand and you know all about it. And we come to you because there are some things we just can't handle ourselves. We know that you are with us. And we know that you hear us. And we know that you will answer us. The Bible tells us you cannot lie. And you invite us to come. And so we come. We come at your bidding. We don't come, Heavenly Father, because somebody told us we need to. We come because you told us to come boldly to the throne. You told us to call upon you in the day of trouble. You told us when we go through the valley, then shadows of death, you'll be there. That's why we come. You told us you'll never leave us or forsake us. And that you would meet every need. And you will supply everything that we have. I thank you for these, your people. I thank you for them, Father. So I ask that myself, they're up. Sometimes they're down, but I thank you for them. Because I knew when you were down, you were there. When I was down, you were there with me. When I'm homotee, I, I missed the mark. You were there with me. You showed mercy and grace. And you kept the cover over my bad stuff. You've been merciful. Let them know, dear God, that they have not come so deep that you can't pick them up. They have not gone so far that you can't bring them back in. Let them know, dear God, that you're a God who forgives and your wife is straight. Thank you, thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you all today and the Lord keep you. You ought to rejoice today. It's all right with you and God. You ought to rejoice. You ought to thank him today. He's on your side. He's with you. He cares. And he loves you just as much as he loves the other person. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Ah. Yeah. 
and he turned me.
people say it, amen. amen. I ask that you would stand as we pretend our tithes and offerings unto the Lord. And I ask that you repeat after me. We give thee but thy own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone. Our trust, O Lord, from thee. Let us pray. Each other, God, our Father, we are so grateful for this privilege and opportunity that you have given us. We thank you, Father, for the multiplicity of blessing, your numeral graces, and for the financial blessing that you have bestowed upon us. Now, Father, we ask that you help us to give with a cheerful heart, realizing that everything that we are, is, and have is because of you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you please remain standing and follow the directions of the ushers, please? <coughs> Nehemiah 8 and 6 says, And Israel blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen. Amen. Lifting up their hands, they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. When we receive a word from the Lord, our answer should be, Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. 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 amen.
alive No, no, no And we cannot see Fruit is rocks No, 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 no But what go Can I tell y'all what to do? Yeah. On Monday, you got to walk on.
say each day. And sometimes we want to leap into the next month or the next week. Just take it one day at a time. His grace is sufficient. Glory, thank God for a wonderful a song service. And God uses song to minister to our hearts. And uh, we are encouraged to continue to trust Continue to lean on him and continue to believe that he has work. I don't see him working. Doesn't look like he's working. Doesn't feel like he's working. The indication is not there that he is working. But I believe that he's working. I believe that God works behind the scenes. And there will come a day of manifestation. It's going to happen. It has already happened. Glory. Hallelujah. God bless you today. I want to speak to us today. From the first chapter of Colossians, Paul letter to the church at Colossae. The first chapter of Colossians, right. beginning with verse number 10. And we shall read through verse number 14. Shall we stand for the reading of the word? Let's read together. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good word, Increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life, who hath delivered us from and hath translated us into the kingdom to dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin. God bless you. Thank you for your video. You may be seated. I want to speak to us for a message entitled The Value of Christ's Cross. It's the value of his cross. During Paul's day, there was a dangerous doctrine that had and was developing, a doctrine known as Gnosticism. The word, word Gnosis means knowledge. And these Gnosis place emphasis on special knowledge. They said that the Old Testament and the ceremonial rites were necessary in addition to Christ's cross. Christ's cross was not enough. You had to follow the uh, Mosaic system. So it tells us here that these Nazis, many of them, were part Jews. Also, the Nazis believed in the worship of angels. They say that angels had to be intermediate. Uh, inter immediate. We have to have, I'm sorry, access to uh, the angels, have immediate access to the angels in order for our prayers and our communication with God to be authentic, to be real, to be... Uh, beneficial. So angels have to come into play as well as uh, the Mosaic system. They also believe that only the elite, those of high, superb intellectual intelligence, that they were only the only ones who could communicate with God and understand and know the deep things of God. And so the common person, the 
person of average intelligence could not communicate with God because you have to be of this special class. Also, they taught that Jesus was not divine. Jesus was a good man, he was a good person, but he was not divine. They denied the deity of Christ. And so Paul set out in this Colossian letter to establish once and for all the deity or the divinity of Jesus Christ. He wanted them to know that Christ is God. He wanted them to know that Christ is supreme and that Christ is sufficient to bring about salvation to every true believer. They, 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 Paul wanted them to understand that having Jesus and basing your faith on him, believing in him, trusting him was enough to bring about salvation and a right relationship with Almighty God. In other words, he said, if you want to come into the family of God, you have to come by Jesus Christ. He is the truth. He is the way. He is the life. And so then this is the occasion in which Paul wrote this letter to the Colossian Christian, one of his most uh, highly theological uh, accomplishments when he talks about Jesus and the supremacy of Jesus, the sufficiency of Jesus. That grace and grace alone is responsible for you and I coming into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for that. Paul combat this heresy, this false teaching about Jesus, this satanic intrusion. Paul combated with, uh, by setting forth to the Colossian Christian the supremacy again of Christ. That Christ is enough and you need not have anybody or uh, anymore. Uh, before the Colossians uh, would conclude that there was some merit behind the teaching of the Nazis, of there was some merit in that teaching, Paul said, let me establish this once and for all, what I call the value of Christ's cross. Yes, yes. And many attempts are being made today to devalue the cross. There are those who say that we need more than the cross of Jesus. It's a good man, but we need to have more. Jehovah Witness, Mormonism, and others try to tell us that Christ is not enough. And there are those who, with their, their political ideas and uh, philosophies and modernism and secularism and, and uh, antinomianism and all the isms that they have, they're saying that man is able to accomplish a, a utopia by himself. Yeah. He need not God, he need not believe in the absolute truth of Bible. This is only uh, another attempt by Satan to distract, to take away from the truth that Acts 4 and 12 tell us, neither is salvation found in anyone but in the name of Jesus. Salvation is in Christ. Nobody else. Salvation is in Christ. We can't live good enough. We can't do enough work to accomplish a relationship with God. It's only by the blood of Jesus for our sins are washed away. Romans 5 and 8. God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. John 3 and 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The next verse. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Salvation is in Jesus. Not in humanism. Salvation is in Jesus. Not in self-sufficiency. Salvation is in Jesus. And so Paul combat this problem of Nazism by presenting Jesus, holding Jesus up. And that's what we must do. As we try to, uh, uh, through our uh, effort and, and, and through our many different philosophy and so forth to try and bring about a better uh, 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 situation in the human race, we need to understand that Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw. I shared with our brothers briefly 
And that, that is, our main problem is not that we're lacking in information. We are lacking in transformation. We have information, but we need transformation. No school of thought, no subject can change a person's heart. Christ himself comes into your life and he affects the heart in a positive way so that those who hate begin to love. Those who live for themselves begin to share their life with others. Christ is necessary. If we need to lift him up, we need to lift him up in our home. We need to lift him up on, on our job. You don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to go through all the type of uh, theological rhetoric, uh, rhetoric and all of this stuff. You just need to know that Christ can touch a life in such a way that he leaves you different than what you were before you came in contact with him. And then you got to let him see it in your own life by the way you talk, by the way you walk, by the way you respond to situations. If you're not, if you're going to pump when things don't go your way, how can you ever advise other people how to wait patiently on the Lord and let the Lord fight their battle? You're not only communicating your word, but you're communicating by your deeds. Am I helping somebody? And so then this is what Paul tries to accomplish. The proponent of false philosophy, they denied the truth that Jesus is the way to God and the only way to God. The Christian must declare the day that Jesus is the only way to God. In him, we learn the truth about God. We learn that God is Father and he loves his children. We learn that God is sovereign. He is in control of all things. It is in Jesus that we learn that God is concerned about us and that God cares about us. And that God will forgive for every sin upon repentance. It's the truth of Jesus. The truth that Jesus relates to us through his words, through his teaching, and through his deeds. That let us know that if we are in a far country, we can come back home. That's the message you must share with your loved ones and your friends. That's the message you must share with your fellow man. That you're not so lost that God cannot save you. That you're not so out that God can't bring you in. That you're not so wrong that God can make you right. And rather than being beaten down by your own remembrance of your own past deeds or your, uh, your, your wrong deeds, you need to turn to him and say, Lord, here I am. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. I've tried it my way. I've tried it other folks' way, but I, I haven't found peace and joy yet, but I come to you. Guide me, O oh, thy great Jehovah, pilgrim truth. Nothing wrong with those old songs. Through this barren land, I'm weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with your powerful hand. Guide and direct my life. Touch me, enlighten my mind. Change my heart. Give me a new perspective in life. Give me grace that I might live by your principles. May I get rid of my own system and accept your system and believe that if I call on you in a day of trouble, you'll hear and you'll answer. If I be still, I'll see your salvation. If I hold my peace, you'll fight my battle. We got to believe that. That just said we got to believe it. Every day. On Monday, we got to walk by faith. On Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we got to walk by faith, believing that God is in it, and God is manipulating circumstances and situations, no matter how bad they are. God is working all things out for our good. Yes, we hurt. Yes, we hurt. But you got to walk on by faith. Yes, you suffer, but you got to walk on by faith. Yes, there are folks who are against us, but we got to walk on by faith. And faith in God. He is able to carry the load. God is able to work it all out. You need not give up. You need not be despondent. God is able to take care of you. He can deliver. But I'm strung out on it. He can deliver. I'm stuck on it. You can deliver. I become psychological and physiologically dependent upon it. But God can deliver. He is a God who can deliver. You just got to believe that. You got to psych yourself up, but believe that he got all power. And he can do it. 
And so then for a while, let us consider the value of Christ's cross. Look at verse number 14. In verse number 14, it said about Christ in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. We have redemption through Christ's blood, the forgiveness of sin. It is sin that restricts our relationship with God. And sin must be removed. Sin as a barrier between us and God. Sin has to be dealt with. And God has dealt decisively with sin by the blood of his son. The cross of Jesus deals with sin. You cannot educate a man out of sin. You cannot teach a subject in such a way that he's going to eradicate a sinful life. It takes the blood of Jesus. What can wash me? Wash away my sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can remove this sin? Paratoma, anomia, ophelima, sin, whatever we call it. Whatever expression it takes, it takes the blood of Jesus to remove sin. We have a sinful nature, and we could not, and we cannot rise to God's standard of holiness and righteousness. We were helpless, we are helpless, but God through his Son has lifted us above our weaknesses. He lifted us above our sin. The blood of Jesus lifts us above our rebellion. The blood of Jesus. Wash away sin. The cross of Christ accomplished according to this verse the forgiveness of sin, which is Paul, what Paul called redemption. You see, in the Old Testament, there are some 30 words for sin. In the New Testament, there are approximately 13, some say 19. But whatever, whatever form sin takes, it takes the blood of Jesus. It takes Christ in the life. That's what it takes. Christ in our life. And thank God for AAA and BBB and CCC, whatever it is. They thank God for all that. But we need the blood of Jesus. <laughs> to take away sin. See, the one man word that the Bible used for sin in the New Testament is harmatia, which means, it's a shooting word, which means to miss the mark. Sin is missing the mark. Sin is not being as good as we ought to be. Sin is not being as great a servant as we should be. Sin is being, not being as good friends as we should. Not being as good a pastor as we should. Sin, and we all have missed the mark. Missed the mark. But God in his grace has given us mercy for our sin. And he gives us grace for our servant. So that if we stay with him and walk by faith, we can become progressively better every day. Not what I ought to be, not what I uh, uh, should be, but I'm not what I used to be. Thank God one day I will be what I'm supposed to be. When Christ comes and eradicate, I come and release us from this old body of flesh. So I, I go on. It is sin is missing the mark. Failing to live up to God's standard. God desires communion with us. But sin interrupt and interfere with that communion. I talked to that on Wednesday night. Concerning uh, the washing. God said, I got to wash you. Peter said, you will not wash me. Christ said, if I don't wash you, then uh, you'll have no part of me. And I pointed out to you that word wash, uh, two different words Christ used. One means to wash all over. The other one it may mean to wash in spot. And what Jesus was saying to, to kind of educate us in that area, what Jesus was saying is that once you are washed, that is, when you come to him and give your life to him, you are, your sins are walked away and you have salvation. But you sin after you have salvation. You don't have to go back and accept Jesus as your personal Savior. That's a once and for all thing. But Jesus said you have to be washed dead. That is, you got to, your mouth got to be washed. Your heart got to be washed. Sometimes you say the wrong thing. You think the wrong thing. Your mind got to be washed. Sometimes you go in the wrong place. Your feet got to be washed. And it's not for salvation, it's for fellowship with him. The one he is saying that unconfessed sin in your life will prevent you from having sweet fellowship with me. That's why if you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. 
You see, God has made the cross of Jesus available for the sin of the sinner. But once the sinner becomes a sin, God has made the throne of grace. I talked about that yesterday. Available to the believer to deal with his sin. So I don't have to go back to the cross and say, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Savior. I got to go to the throne of grace and say, here I am, Lord. I need mercy for my sins. I need grace for my servants. I need you to forgive me. I need you to remove the desire that I have in my heart to do wrong. Am I helping somebody? Yes, that's why we understand when we sing on a hill for weeks to an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. Though that cross is scorned by others, the world, we love that cross. Where the dearest and the best for a world of lost sinners. The cross! The cross! Why the cross? The Christians could have chosen in that generation, any symbol to represent their belief in Jesus. But they chose a cross. A cross where folk died in ignominious death. A cross. Nobody wanted to be associated with a cross. But the Christian gloried in the cross because they know that by the cross of Jesus, God had repaired their brokenness. And God had brought restoration to their lives. And they glory in the cross. The world laughed at the cross. Cicero, Roman Emperor, said the cross was a cruel and disgusting death. But not the Christian. The Christian said, I love the cross. Because that's where my soul was made right at the cross. That's where my name was changed at the cross. My name was taken off the book of damnation and placed on the book of salvation. It was at the cross, at the cross, where I fight for the life. And the brightness of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight and I'm happy all the day. Oh, you got money. I know I don't have no money, but I'm happy. <laughs> Everybody approve of you. No, everybody don't approve of me, but I'm happy. I'm happy with Jesus. He makes life worth living. He gives meaning to life. I find what life is all about when I open my heart and allow his grace to minister to my soul. And then I can see the beauty of that which is supposedly ugly in my life. I see the hands of God in every situation in my life. I don't get discouraged. You see, when you really see him and understand the cross, you don't get discouraged when you are down because being down offers you an opportunity to look up. And when you're going through hell and high water, it gives you an opportunity to show the lost person how a Christian handles difficulty. All things work together for me. You think about it, Romans 5 and 1. We look at it. Christ has brought peace. His cross has brought peace. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, when He died on the cross and you accepted Him, He gives you peace with God. Now you want to walk each day by faith so you can have the peace of God. I got peace with God. You're a believer. You got peace with God. But every believer does, does not enjoy the peace of God. That peace that keeps you when everybody else is falling down. That, that peace that keeps you looking ahead for a brighter day when others say all oh, hopes are gone. That peace that tells you, yes, you may not matter with other folk, but you matter in God's sight. It doesn't matter what others might say about you and how they characterize you. It is a peace that said, I'm made in the image of God. I am blessed with all spiritual blessings. I'm more than a conqueror. Underneath me are God's everlasting arms. I call upon God in a day of trouble. And he heard and he answered my prayer. Pluck my foot from the mountain. Made me rejoice. Have me laughing when there's nothing funny. On, Have me crying when nothing hurts me. But it's the grace and the joy of the Lord that is in your soul that keeps you going on. No matter what others might say or what they might do, it lets you know that if God be for you, it doesn't matter who is against you.
That's the no, no, no. Look, notice, notice in Romans 5 and 1. Notice the tense of the verb. He said, we have. Not we will have, but we have. That's present. The tense of the verb is present. We have. Present tense. It's a present possession. I already have it. I'm rich. Even though the bank account says zero. Yeah, I already have my riches. Am I helping somehow? Uh, yes. Yeah. I got all power, even though I'm weak sometimes. I already have it. I'm just waiting for circumstances to develop so I can apply my faith, my trust in God so that God can be known through how the way I deal with my situation. Somebody ought to help me out. Somebody help me out. How can you hold up? You can hold up because you have the strength of God. You can hold up because you got the power of God. You can hold up because you got the promises of God in your life. We said, witness, look, go through the ordeal of separation from our loved ones. But I'm still holding on. You still holding on. Why? Because the grace of God is sufficient and God promised that he'll never leave us and he'll never forsake us. I want to encourage you to hold on. I want to encourage you to trust God. Don't, don't, don't let your trouble be wasted. I preach a sermon on that. Don't let your trouble be wasted. Learn something from your trouble. Let your trouble draw you nearer to the one who is able to handle your trouble. Let your trouble enable you to see more and more of the grace of God in your life. You see, you, we have, you can rejoice right now. You are accepted in the beloved. You can rejoice about that. You are blessed, I say, with all spiritual blessing. You can count on God to supply all of your needs through Christ Jesus. You have that right now. God will bestow his grace in your life. And if you walk in the pathway of duty, if you walk to the clothes of duty, you shall, I shall see the king in his beauty. When I'm gone the last, and when you're gone the last mile of the way, when I'm gone, when you're gone the last mile of the way, we shall rest the close of the deep. We, not only that, but we shall see the king in his beauty. What I see now by faith, I'm going to see by sight. Am I helping somebody? I'm almost finished here. When we're going to last, my way. Colossians 1 and 14 tells us in whom we have redemption. Romans 5 and 1, if we look at Colossians 1 and 12, Paul says, giving thanks unto the Father, which have made us meet. That word meet means qualified. In other words, he has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the sense of light. You got to know who you are. You got to study who you are. You got to read your Bible and give yourself to the Bible and ask God to open your understanding. You got to get on the teaching that can help uh, magnify the truth of God's word. He made us meet. Christ qualified us. I don't deserve his goodness, but Christ qualified me for the goodness of God. I don't deserve God's help in my situation, but Christ has qualified me. Christ has qualified you. You need an answer? He has qualified you to receive an answer from God. You need strength? He qualified. You qualify. Or you got to show up at the storehouse. <laughs> you know how you show up? You show up on your knees. You don't show up demanding nothing from God. You show up saying, Lord, I know in myself I'm not deserving, but I thank you that you have qualified me for this healing. You have qualified me for this strength. You have qualified me for this joy. You have qualified me to receive help from you. You have qualified me to love those who don't love me. God qualified you to do it. Get up and live according to the status that God has placed on you. I'm going to cut this short a little while, but I want you to see also Colossians 
1 and 18, he said, the cross of Christ has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. You ought to shout. You ought to shout. The cross of Jesus took me out of, took me from under the power of Satan and have brought me into the kingdom of God and I am under the power of Christ. You see that? You see that in your theme. Submit yourself unto the Lord. Resist the devil. If the devil got you on the run, it is because you don't understand that you are no longer under his power. He is a roaring lion. That's all he can do, roar. He is a roaring lion. Make it known. But you got to face him with the scripture and say, get behind me. I serve a risen Savior. He is in the world today. You want to know how I know Satan? He lived. He lived in my heart. You got to use the word of God against him and rise up and declare who you are in Christ. See, try to try to get you to doubt your relationship with God. You say, but yeah, Red, but I do say we all do. I often say, and I'm closing, if some divine intelligence were to burst through this those doors and come up here and say, every one of you in here, I want to make known everything about your life. I'm the first one out here. <laughs> because none of us would want the whole story told about ourselves. Am I right, somebody? Come on, come on. I, I know you got your religious eyes to be on. I know you got your religious face on. And I know you struck like a proud spiritual peacock. I understand that. But if, if truth is to be told, you don't want everybody to know everything about you. Am I right? That's the grace of God that He keeps some things out of the eyes of the public. Am I helping? But one day, <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. Stop putting on and pretend all of this. You are what you are by the grace of God. That may be one. That may be one today. That may be one today. You want to come. You want to come and say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Give your heart to him. Allow him his rightful place in your life. You may come by letter. You may come by Christian experience. You may come as a candidate of baptism. Let him have his way in your life. The cross of Jesus that has made this moment possible in your life. Take advantage of it. Hallelujah. The burden of your heart can roll away. That can be a satisfaction in your life to know that your relationship with God is in heaven. Glory, hallelujah. By letter, by Christian experience, as a candidate for baptism, you may come and say, Yes. All that God purpose for your life. You're here. Glory, hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you so very kindly. Oh, oh, oh. oh. God bless you real good and may God keep you. This is the glorious gospel 
of Jesus Christ. The glorious gospel of Christ is that God has paid our sin debt himself. When we accept Christ as his Savior, our Savior, we owe nothing anymore because on the cross he cried out to tell us stay, which means it is finished, paid in full. And that's our the occasion for our rejoicing. And that's what I try to do, encourage your heart, to rejoice in the Lord. It doesn't make us take sin lightly, but what it does is impress heavily on our heart the responsibility that we have to answer God's privilege by living for him and being obedient. You can't do it yourself. You open your heart and let the Spirit of God work in your heart and empower you. So that each day you become better and better. So you understand that? That's what it's about. That's what it's not about impressing each other. We all have sinned, come short. God loves us so much. God bless you today. And the Lord keep you. See you on Wednesday night. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Shall we all stand? Amen. Father, we thank you so much. Thank you for this day, for the fellowship that we've had with one another, the worship experience we've had. And we pray that you continue to give understanding to our hearts, that we might live our life by faith and walk each day by faith, live for you, and trust that you will work all things out in our lives so that in the end, we'll hear you say, well done, you glorified me by your living, you influenced and encouraged many others to place that trust and that faith in them. Thank you, Father. Take care of us as we travel to our place of destiny. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and Lord keep you. How many of you believe in miracles? You still, you still believe in miracles? Yeah, also uh, on Friday, this coming Friday, all day prayer on this coming Friday. Church will be open from 6 in the morning until 6 in the afternoon. Do y'all believe in miracles?